Um, but yeah, this is the, our your elected officials taking money from immigrant detention profiteers. My name is Molly and I'm a researcher with Little Sis. Um, and I'm gonna share a little bit more about kind of the agenda for tonight and what we're hoping to cover. But a couple of real quick kind of tech things first. Um, so this is a Zoom webinar and call. So there's a screen share component. Most of the training tonight is gonna be um, our senior researcher at Little Sis, Rob, showing people how to use some particular campaign finance tools. So if you're at your computer, that's great. If you're not at your computer, try to find, um, try to get there. And you can see in the email, there's a link that will take you to the screen share part. Um, we have everyone muted to cut down on background noise. So if you can keep yourself muted, that's great. Um, there's a little button at the bottom of the screen that says chat. And you can introduce yourself in the chat channel right now. And also, as we're going through things, if you have particular questions, please put them in the chat box. Um, we're going to have two designated times to stop, and folks will be able to ask questions then. Um, but also, feel free to put questions in the box. And Manira, who's our little community manager, will be monitoring that and can kind of bring them to our attention as we're going through tonight. Um, and at the end, we'll have a poll for folks who if very, are interested in continuing this research together with us. Um, so there'll be a little tech part, portion of that. But other than that, I think that's most of the tech stuff, unless people have questions and feel free to put it in the chat box. So we're gonna get started. Um, Rob, if you could go to the next slide, that would be great. Um, so the kind of schedule for tonight is we'll, a welcome, which we just did. I'm going to give a little bit of context for folks um, about what we're really talking about when we're talking about immigrant family detention profiteers and the companies that are profiting from Trump's deportation machine. And then the most of the night is going to be focused on the skill share portion where we're going to learn how you can figure out if your particular elected officials are taking money from these profiteers. And then We'll do a round of questions um, and let people know about some next steps and resources if you're interested in continuing down this line of research and action. So just so folks know, like I said, my name is Molly and I'm a researcher at Little Sis. The other presenter tonight is going to be Rob, who's our senior researcher at Little Sis. And then Manira, our community manager, is in the little chat box tracking questions and helping us with all the back end stuff. Um, so real quick for folks who aren't familiar, um, little sis, a little bit about us and kind of why we're doing this training in the first place. So little sis is a watchdog research group. We're called little sis because we're the opposite of big brother. So instead of big brother looking down on you and collecting information on you, we're researchers, activists, organizers, journalists, looking up at the world's most powerful corporations. And what that means, we do strategic corporate research in partnership with economic and racial justice organizations across the country. We also run a database that helps people do this type of research in a crowdsourced way. That's called littlesys.org. Um, and kind of a key part of our work is that we're really committed to sharing these types of power research skills with activists and organizers through trainings and webinars like this one, um, and really trying to make these skills as accessible to folks um, as possible. So real quick, before we get started, I just want to give a little bit of background into the thinking behind this webinar and kind of why we're doing it in the first place. Um, so I'm sure like people on this call, we at Little Sis saw the like outpouring of anger and disgust across the country about first Trump's policy of separating families at the border and then his policy of indefinitely detaining immigrant families and also saw all of the incredible organizing happening by immigrant rights organizations across the country, calling for an end to family separation, for the abolition of ICE, um, and for an end to the massive immigration detention and deportation mach machine. And so in response, we are investigating the corporations that are profiting from and enabling that immigrant detention machine. And we found that there are a lot of different types of companies that were profiting from this in one way or another. And I'll share a little bit more about that in a second. Um, and then we've also seen that activists and organizations are increasingly pressuring those companies to pick a side, whether they're gonna continue to profit from and enable Trump's cruel policies or not. 
Um, so I'm sure folks have been following some of this in the news, or maybe folks on the call have been part of some of these efforts, but things like employees at tech companies like Microsoft that have multi-million dollar contracts with ICE are organizing to demand their employer cut ties with the agency. Um, you know, this week activists in New York City shut down an Amazon store over the company's um, practice of sale, selling surveillance equipment to ICE. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, activists in Minnesota were arrested in an act of civil disobedience at the Minnesota Offices of General Dynamics, which is a massive military contractor that has a lot of lucrative federal contracts to provide services that help separate immigrant children from their families. Um, and so, you know, all of this has been happening and we've been doing research alongside with some of these groups and some of them are also interested in pressuring companies um, and understanding what politicians were taking money from these companies since, of course, a key source of support for immigrant detention profiteers are the elected officials that take money from them and then in turn create public policies that are favorable for them. Um, so we're doing this webinar because we started doing some research on that and found some interesting things, but our list of kind of all the different politicians that are taking this money is incomplete. And so we wanted to reach out to folks who might be interested in helping create a more complete set of that information, and then also just kind of get these skills out so that if you want to figure out which of your elected officials you can target and pressure for taking this money, you can take the skills from this webinar and figure out who are the right ones. Um, and, you know, again, just for another piece of context is like, we've already seen that starting to happen. So this week in California, um, the Lieutenant Governor of California, Gavin Newsom, was exposed for taking money from private prison companies um, during his campaign, um, which prompted him to uh, donate the same amount of money to groups that are working for immigrant families. And then the California Democratic Party announced that it would no longer take money from companies or trade associations that operate private prisons or immigrant detention centers. So we can see that there's kind of momentum picking up um, in making this money toxic and so right now is a really good time for folks to come together figure out what other politicians are taking this money and then strategize together to figure out how we pressure them around it um so at little this kind of one of the first things that we did was start figuring out what particular companies we consider to be immigrant detention profiteers and what are the different ways that they're profiting um, and then, Yara, if you want, you could put the link to the article that we wrote about that in the chat channel so people later can check that out if you're interested it's kind of more in the nitty gritty details. But I have here on this slide kind of the handful of different types of ways that companies are profiting from immigration detention right now. So but private prison companies like CoreCivic, which used to be called Correction Corporation of America and Geo Group, that are operating family and um, adult detention centers. So that's one. There are also like big nonprofits that are technically nonprofits, but that are making billions of dollars that operate child detention centers. So Southwest Key has been one that's been in the news a lot, for example. Um, then there are contractors that provide support services to the detention and deportation process. That's actors like General Dynamics that I mentioned, MBM. They're doing things like providing transportation, case management, logistical services um, for ICE and for detention centers. Then, of course, there are Wall Street banks like Wells Fargo that are financing all of these companies and really providing the cash for these immigration policies to, to be carried out. Um, and then tech companies like Microsoft, Palantir, Amazon, that are providing technological and surveillance infrastructure to ICE so that that agency can carry out its agenda. So we wanted folks to kind of just have a handle on those different types of profiteers. On tonight's webinar, we're gonna focus particularly on the private prison companies and Geo Group and CoreCivic in particular. So I, again, I think a lot of folks on this call are probably folks familiar with companies are why they're being targeted but just to review for folks so geo and core civic are the world's largest private prison companies they build and run family and adult immigration detention centers um, so they have 
places all across the country where they're doing that, um, including two large family detention facilities in Texas. And really, they're extremely integral to Trump's ability to carry out his immigration agenda because right now, private prison companies run more than 70% of immigrant detention beds across the country, which is a pretty astounding amount. So if Trump is going to detain more immigrants, if he's going to deport more people, he is really going to need Geo Group and CoreCivic to build and run more facilities. Um, and already there have been federal contracts going out that Geo Group and CoreCivic are bidding on to do just that. So they're really central to Trump being able to forward his agenda. Um, we also are focusing on them because there's already been organizing for, for many years, particularly folks that are organizing around mass incarceration issues and prison abolition around Geo Group and CoreCivic. And so there have been some wins already of groups getting politicians to refuse money from them, um, getting particular places to end their contracts with Geo Group and CoreCivic um, when they run jails and prisons and other services that are outside of it, the immigrant sphere. Um, and there's also some kind of unique opportunities to pressure where they get their money from um, banks like Wells Fargo and others that I talked about before. So we're going to show them as the example that we're using tonight to do campaign finance research. But all of the skills that we're showing are really applicable to other companies. And I know there might be folks on this call who already are like, we know that we're going after Amazon. We want to figure out who they're getting money, who they're giving money to. We know we're going after Wells Fargo. And all of these skills should be applicable across different companies, but we're going to use them as kind of our example throughout. Before I throw it over to Rob to start doing that, I also just wanted to let people know we did a first round of this research. Um, and there are a couple of things I just wanted to lift up for people to have in mind as maybe you're starting to do this research for where you live. Um, so things that we saw are that Geo Group and CoreCivic really give it all levels of government from hyper local to state to federal because they have business at all levels of government and are trying to win contracts and win um, federal dollars, state dollars, local dollars to build and operate both detention centers, prisons, jails. Um, they give to both Democrats and Republicans. They definitely give more to Republicans, but the amount that they're giving to Democrats is still quite large. And so that presents some opportunities to pressure, particularly, you know, politicians that are saying um, more like supposedly progressive or tolerant things about immigration right now, but are still taking money from these, these companies. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that they're giving to both individual candidates. So like in that example of Gavin Newsom that I gave, but they're also giving to big PACs. Um, super PACs, committees, organizations like the Democratic Governors Association, but then kind of like re-grant that money to particular candidates. So in some situations, we've seen candidates that have said they're not going to take money from private prison companies, but there still are through one group like that. So that'll be something that's important as people are figuring out if your local officials have taken money to make sure to be able to hold their feet to the fire. Um, and Manero will put that, that link in the channel too for folks who are more interested. So that's a little bit of context to kind of get people's heads around this stuff. And I'm going to throw it over to Rob, who's going to help us um, figure out how we actually do the research to identify if particular elected officials are taking credit for the money. So Rob, I will give it to you. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Um, um, I'm, I'm calling in on my phone here so I'm, I'm hoping uh, I'm audible it looks like I'm, I'm doing good right now um, so yeah uh, just by way of introduction my name is Rob Galbraith I'm a senior research analyst at Little Sif um, I'm gonna go through three tools um, one you're everyone here I'm sure is already familiar with and then the other two are more sort of um, technical uh, that you know we use at Little Sis and that really anyone, you know, with access to the internet can use when they want to uh, do this type of research. Um, so I think always, uh, you know, for, for us when we're doing this type of research, our, our first sort of stop is uh, Google or, or really, you know, any uh, search engine um, that you might uh, 
want to use. Um, <clears throat> this, you know, obviously is not going to give you uh, your, uh, you know, really kind of fine pointed um, data <laughs> about, uh, you know, who is taking money from uh, immigrant detention profiteers or, you know, whichever, uh, you know, horrible industry you're looking at. But it is a good place to start just to get a sort of general idea of the landscape. Um, you know, you may find that other people have done some of this research already in the past, and it can sort of be um, kind of like a guidepost or, or, or helping you to sort of uh, figure out, uh, you know, where, where you're, where you're going to be, where's a good place to start from. Um, and so, you know, just for this example here, uh, I'm going to search uh, for uh, Marco Rubio and uh, Geo Group. Um, just oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm so hearing that we're I seeing think the you're slides. Have to, exactly. Okay. I think you'll just hit uh, share screen again, and uh, yeah. you'll be able to. Great. Yeah. Sorry about that, everybody. Okay. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything. It was only the Google home screen. Um, okay, so I'm really just going to type, you know, in uh, in quotes here, Marco Rubio and Geo Group. Uh, Geo Group, uh, like Molly said, is going to be the example that we're going to use sort of throughout this uh, exercise, but that's really applicable to any, you know, company uh, that you want to use. I'm putting these search terms in quotes here because that will search for those things um, as a phrase, and that's going to really help narrow down the the number of results that we're we're going to get from from Google when we do this. So, um, you know, just you know, for example, when I search Margo, Marco Rubio Geo Group, uh, we have you know all of these uh, different uh, responses. You know, this one here from uh, 2018, but going back, you know, as early as you know, April 2015, uh, 2012. Um, so I think it's always a good good idea to start with kind of just, you know, doing a search engine search to, to get an idea of, of, you know, what the landscape is. If someone's done this research before, uh, you know, if, if you have like a large list of targets you might be looking at, that can help you sort of uh, narrow the field as well. Um, so switching on to just the, the actual sort of, uh, you know, research, uh, the real, uh, you know, tools, uh, I'm going to show Open Secrets now. Uh, Open Secrets is a database that's run by a group called the Center for Responsive Politics. Um, this is, uh, you know, they, they have a lot of different uh, data on here, both about uh, campaign finance at the federal level, uh, as well as information about lobbying, uh, information like uh, 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 elected officials, uh, personal financial disclosures, and they do a lot of sort of aggregation and uh, analysis that makes it a good place to to get started. You know, if you're looking at your um, you know national level uh, elected officials, this is a good place to uh you know to start your search because they will uh open secrets as we'll see they sort of aggregate all of the donation data together and give you good uh totals and they also give nice breakdowns about where that money is coming from um so for this example the, the first example i'm going to show using open secrets is we're going to look at a, a candidate or not a candidate but uh an elected official's uh you know, profile on Open Secrets, and we're going to use Marco Rubio again as our example. So I'm going to start out just this is the Open Secrets homepage here that we're on. I'm going to click Menu right now, and then uh, we're they have you know several different kind of tabs here in this menu. I'm going to the first tab, Politicians and Elections, and I'm clicking on Congress. And this takes you to uh, an area of the site where you can search for individual Congress members. So I'm gonna search for Marco Rubio here. And this will show you, uh, you know, profiles uh, of Marco Rubio and the money he's taken from several different years, as well as profiles of just the entire uh, um, Senate races that, he, that he's been in. Um, so we'll click his most recent one, the 2018 profile. and 
you know, it's, we get sort of kind of, you know, a view from uh, 20,000 feet here. Uh, you know, these are the top industries uh, right here below the short blurb and the, you know, list of the, the committees that he serves on. Um, it shows the, the top sort of industries that donate to him from 2013 through 2018, the top contributors um, and the amount that they've given. So this is, um, this total here will be the total from individuals who have listed uh, these places as their employer or uh, the actual organizations themselves. Um, to look at, uh, you know, whether Marco Rubio has taken money from uh, Geo Group, I'm going to click up here on this contributors tab, which is the one, two, three, four, fifth one over. Um, could, this will this is showing uh, you know information about his contributors. We can look at um, donations to his campaign committee, uh, his leadership pack, or or both combined. And you know down here they'll show you, they list his top 20 contributors, but we can change this to his top 100 uh, using the drop down menu. That'll refresh. And then if I'm going to just search on the page for Geo Group uh, instead of just scrolling down. And then we can see here it's the, it's the number 23 contributor to Marco Rubio. This is in this election cycle. And they've given uh, $38,450 from uh, Geo Group. And if we look here, if there's a total individuals and packs. Again, so this uh, $38,450 is from individuals affiliated with geo group and that is that is people that that work there whenever anyone makes a, a federal level um, campaign contribution they there there's a field where they're at least supposed to list their employer uh, so this is thirty eight thousand four hundred fifty dollars rubio has gotten from people who have listed geo group as their employer and none so far from their uh pack their political action been so far this year um so another way that we can use Open Secrets is to look at, uh, rather than looking at the, the elected official who is taking the money, we can look at profiles, um, you know, on the other side of the equation, profiles for uh, the organizations uh, that, that, are get, that are giving money to our elected officials. So I, I just navigated us back to opensecrets.org, the homepage here, and I'm gonna start by clicking the menu again. I'm clicking onto the influence and lobbying tab, and I'm going to click uh, organizations. Now, you, you want to search in the, in the sort of organization section of the website, again, for, uh, for the companies, uh, union, it says right here, companies, unions, super PACs, et cetera, that, um, you know, donate money uh, in elections, and they have sort of, you know, some really uh, high-level data for, like, all-time donors. Um, I'm going over to the search field on, on the left here, and I am searching for Geo Group. That takes me to, similar to that uh, profile page for uh, Marco Rubio, we have a profile page for the Geo Group. Uh, the defaults into the 2016 election cycle, I think probably because that was uh, the most recent presidential campaign. But we do have a drop down menu here that we can look at 2018, or we can look at all election cycles. And this is how much money they've donated uh, since 2004, how much money they've spent on lobbying since 2004. And they have sort of uh, trends here. Uh, from individuals, PACs, and uh, soft or outside money. They have a, you know, a chart of lobbying totals as well. Uh, Open Secrets is really cool because it brings in information from all sorts of different um, public uh, databases, from the Federal Elections Commission, from the Senate, um, lobbying filings, uh, and they sort of aggregate it together in a way that makes it really legible and uh, you know, a great way to, uh, to you know, for someone to just get a, a sort of at a glance seeing, uh, you know, who are the top um, 
you know, people in Congress and, uh, and you know, in the presidency that, that are taking uh, money from, from different companies. I'm clicking onto the recipients tab here, where again, it breaks it down by uh, election cycle. Uh, you can see like right at the top here, they, they've given um, in 2018, in this election cycle, they've given, you know, about $60,000 to Democrats, you know, $184,000 to Republicans, uh, greatly favoring uh, incumbents, none, none to any third parties, it looks like. Um, the, the number of members, they have, you know, sliced up, uh, you know, different ways via, uh, for House members, uh, senators, and then down at the bottom, they have, you know, your, your top recipients here. Um, and this, again, this is for the, the 2018 cycle. Um, I will note that uh, you know Marco Rubio is is not showing up here. Uh, that's because the the data does come from you know some to uh, you know to update across the the various um, you know various different little buckets of information on Open Secrets, and that's why it's sort of important to you know we we can use this as um, you know to to get some, to get you know some high level totals, but if we really want to, uh, you know, drill down, um, we are going to want to look at individual uh, campaign filings. Um, and we can either do that uh, on a, a state by state level using the various um, state campaign finance databases, or we can use uh, the next tool that I'm going to show, which is called follow the money. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to pause and see if anyone has uh, any questions. Did anything come up in the in the chat here, or are we good to move on? There are no questions in the chat box right now, so maybe we can go ahead and uh, move on to follow the money. Okay, great. And people can ask questions. Yeah, um, if yeah, again, if you have any questions that that are coming up for you, uh, type them in to follow the money, uh, or <laughs> type them into the chat box. Um, you know. I can uh, go back and walk through the different steps uh, I took to do any of this, but we are also uh, recording this, and the recording is going to be available uh, um, for folks that have uh, signed up for this. So, um, moving on, I'm going to click on to my Follow the Money tab here. Um, and so, Follow the Money is, like I, like I said, it, it has a lot more granular information they aggregate campaign finance filings from uh, the federal government and from uh, basically, I, th I think every every different state um, in the country, and they 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 clean up the data uh, for for typos and, and everything, and make make it so you can search uh, everything all at once. And it's a really really powerful research tool. There is a, a slight lag time uh, between when uh, you know filings uh, you know are made public by the various states uh, boards boards of election, but uh, you know by and large um, this uh, you know this pretty much has it all. Uh, there is a little bit of a learning curve to use it, but uh, the folks at the National Institute on Money and Politics that uh, that that run the database are super responsive. They're super helpful. Um, and they're, they're, you know, generally like really excited that, uh, to interact with folks that, that are, that are using the site and, and can be really a, a great asset to, to rely on, um, if you do have any questions. Um, so we're starting here right at the homepage of followthemoney.org. Um, and they have, you know, various different, uh, tools that, that you can use to, uh, start uh, cutting into their data. Um, by different elections, you can look up your specific district, your state legislature. Uh, I'm going to start with by uh, using their search builder tool. So they have like a this little uh, box here, ask anything with a start here button. We click that, and this loads up uh, a tool that we can use to start uh, basically filtering through uh, the different data. 
sit there to um, basically ask the database to deliver to us like uh, a nice uh, slice of, of what they've got that uh, you know has the information that we're looking for. So you, each of these little boxes is something that you can click to basically further narrow down what you're going to get. So if you just click go right now, it will show all contributions to candidates and committees in the 2016 election. It's going to give you, you know, a, a staggering amount of results. And I honestly, probably so many results that I don't know if, if it would even work. So we want, we want to, to narrow things down. So since we're using GeoGroup as our example, uh, the private prison operator, we'll click contributions from here. And it shows us, you know, various different ways, uh, you know, we can filter the, you know, the, the from uh, part of, you know, a, a campaign finance relationship. Um, specific contributor will, if you know the, the name of, of, of what you're looking for, uh, you know, you can search it by that. You can search it by parent organization, uh, National Institute on Money and Politics. So you could conceivably search for all donations from, you know, the private prison industry to, um, to uh, uh, candidates in, in your area. Uh, locations, you can search, you know, money coming from out of your state into your state. Uh, types of contributors, you can search only for money coming from people or only money coming from organizations. And uh, types of records lets you sort of cut out maybe like small donations that you don't think really matter and only focus on, on big donors. Uh, we're going to start by looking at campaign contributions from uh, geo group corporate entities. So I'm going to click the specific contributor button right now. And this is going to, you know, prompt me to type in the, the name of the contributor. So I'm typing geo group and we'll wait for a second and it'll pop up uh, a little menu of possible, um, you know, possible entities in their database that they think we might be talking about. If I hover over GeoGroup here, this will show us their various other, uh, you know, corporate names. Uh, GeoGroup has rebranded uh, a bunch of times in their history. And this has sort of, you know, again, sort of like top level data about, you know, how much money uh, they've given, um, again, uh, yeah, from uh, various places. And uh, there's some lobbying information there as well. So I'm clicking GeoGroup here. And so now this is showing me GeoGroup contributions to candidates and committees. Um, but you know, since we are talking about how do you find money being given by immigration or immigrant detention profiteers to politicians in your region, we will uh, we'll filter the, the two column and we can do that, you know, a bunch of different ways. If you know the candidate that you're looking at, like say maybe you did a Google search and you know, you know, Marco Rubio has taken a lot of money from GeoGroup, you can just click that candidate button, type Marco Rubio there, and that, that will only give you money from GeoGroup to Marco Rubio. You can still do it by office holders. So you can search for people like with specific political positions. Uh, contributions on on uh, ballot measures, political party committees, um, independent expenditure groups. Uh, Filer will let you search by um, the, the 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 name of the uh, committee or uh, entity. Um, states will let you search obviously uh, by states, and specific election years will let you limit it by date. I'm going to click states here. And for this example, we're going to use uh, Florida. And so I'm, cl I'm just clicking Florida right there, and I'll click OK. And it takes us back to our search builder. And this is not, now it's showing me geo group contributions to candidates and committees in elections in Florida. That sounds like a pretty good place to start. So I'm going to click Go. And that will take us to um, a results page. And right now it's sort of, uh, you know, look, combing through uh, the database, finding everything that's responsive to the search that I just built, uh, you know, using those specific uh, uh, parameters. And now it, now it has, now it's telling me it has uh, some reports available. 
And right at the top, there's they say we have 600 contributions totaling $4.3 million. Um, here we can select and slice and dice how we want uh, that information, uh, how we want them to present um, the results to us. Um, because I want to look at both uh, candidates and committees, I'm going to click the filer button here, and this will show us all the different individual filers that filed campaign finance reports about getting money from uh, Geo Group, and it and it'll give us like the total that filer has um, has disclosed. Um, we could do candidate, but that will only show us candidates and not uh, committees. But you can see there's lots of different other ways that we can we can sort the information, and I'll and I'll show you one other way that I think is particularly useful. Uh, right after we look at the results sorted by filer. So I click filer uh, up here in the general info bar, and what it's showing me now is all of these different, you know, all of, all of these different filers. Uh, the Florida Republican Party, and it says there's 120 records here totaling $3.5 million given by Geo Group. Um, you know, 304,036 uh, records to the Florida Democratic Party, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now we have some uh, specific uh, names here. Um, if we click one of these magnifying glasses, this will open up a new search results window. And this is the other way that I think is particularly useful uh, to slice out the information, and that's by clicking record. And so now this is showing me GeoGroup contributions to the Florida Republican Party in elections in Florida. Uh, and there's 120 contributions totaling $3.5 million. Because I clicked record here, this is showing me each individual record in their database. So that's really useful because that, that will give us like the the name on the actual campaign finance filing um basically contributor here is how uh national institute on money and politics has coded has you know interpreted that and so like i said um you know they will correct for typos and 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 things you can see here on the original name there's the geo group comma inc period the geo group inc they've, you know, recognized that those are both the same thing and lump them together with GeoGroup. That's why this uh, tool is so powerful, because they really have cleaned up a lot of this information for uh, researchers to make it a lot more legible. Uh, it saves a lot of time uh, combing through things and comparing addresses, um, et cetera, et cetera, to, uh, to make sure that you're actually dealing with the same corporation. Um, I, I told you they, they code things. Um, they have coded things by industry. So if we had done an industry search, for example, we could search by correctional facilities, construction and management for profit, um, you know, in Florida, like all of donations from there. This will, this tells us the date of the contribution, the amount of the contribution, the last time uh, this um, record was updated in their database, and some other information, including the, the city and state that, that it came from. Um, up here it tells us there's 120 contributions that they have. We can, you know, scroll through these. Um, see, you know, these are going back to uh, 2010 here. Um, here's some early ones, even even in 2005. Uh, this this is uh, this is a, re a really great way um, to sort of, um, if, you know, if if you want to. Uh, you know, if if you if you want to to do this sort of uh, you know targeted search, um, you know just in just in your area, I, I think this is the you know this is the way that that we would definitely do a, a, a little sys. And another nice thing about this is if you don't really like uh, you know working with their with their interface, you can download um, this data by clicking one of these buttons. To download it, you do have to sign up for an account with them, but it's free. Anyone can do it. Um, you know, you just have to put in your name and email address and probably respond to a, uh, to like a confirmation email. Um, if, are, are there any questions on, on uh, follow the money so far?
If not, I'm going to show, um, you know, one other, uh, you know, important way to use this. Um, so this time we looked at contributions in Florida from Geo Group corporate entities, right? Um, if we, um, instead of doing it by filer, if we sort it by contributor, um, oh, that didn't, that didn't actually do it. Um, anyway, the, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do it by, by record here to show. Again, I, so I just clicked on record to look at all the individual records. And so this is showing us, you know, the GeoGroup PAC, uh, the GeoGroup Inc., uh, you know, GeoCare Inc. These are all corporate entities that, uh, that are donating, that donated money in Florida. Um, but another major way that, uh, you know, corporations and businesses and the people behind them, um, you know, pour money into elections and support candidates is the employees and the executives of the companies uh, also are, are, you know, uh, often major political donors. So we are going to go back to the Follow the Money homepage and we'll build a new search. And instead of searching uh, for corporate donations, we are going to search for um, donations for people where their employer or parent organization is listed as Geo Group. So again, I went back to this homepage, I clicked the Start Here button, and we'll start again with contributions from. But instead of clicking specific contributor, this time I'm clicking parent organization. And you know it it works very much the same way. I'm typing in Geo Group. It's populated a list of possible uh, results. Geo Group is right at the top. I'm clicking Geo Group here. Show me contributions with parent org of Geo Group to candidates and committees. Again, we'll look at Florida because that's where Geo Group is headquartered. That's where they have a lot of facilities. That's where they spend a lot of money. Um, you know, I think uh, one thing that Molly mentioned. Uh, you know, in the sort of context um, area was that, um, you know, it's important to look at how these businesses are, are, are donating money, not just to uh, federal officials, but to state and local officials. When you're talking about the private prison industry, um, they end up giving a lot to state and local officials because they build facilities all over the country and they need, uh, you know, zoning permits, and they need uh, state level approvals, and they need, um, you know, various local approvals as well to build these facilities. And so, uh, because of that, they need to be supporting lots of uh, politicians at lots of different levels of government, not just, you know, the highest federal level. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess all this is to say that, uh, especially when you're dealing with the private prison industry, it's it's important to look at your state and local contributions as well. So I'm typing Florida here. Oh, I need to spell it correctly for it to work. Florida, I clicked OK. This is showing me contributions with a parent org of Geo Group to candidates and committees in elections in Florida. I'll click Go. And it often takes uh, a little bit to comb through the database because they do have, have a lot there. But so we see here we have 177 contributions totaling $142,634. It's, you know, a lot smaller than, um, than uh, the, the, uh, the corporate donations because this is money coming from, you know, individual people rather than, uh, rather than corporations. Again, we'll we'll look at it by filer. I think I think that's often a, a good place to start, um, especially if you don't. And um, you know, if you're doing you know everybody with with the parent org of Geo Group, um, you know, you're probably going to be look trying to look at the people uh, who are taking the money rather than uh, you know starting off by looking at the uh, contributions from the individual people. But so I clicked filer, and this is showing us all the different filers here. And we have, uh, you know, at the top, 
for these individual donations, uh, uh, former Governor Charlie Crist. Uh, you know, short, just below that, Marco Rubio, uh, Joe Garcia, Scott, Rick Scott, et cetera. Um, you know, this results page uh, works exactly the same no matter how you've built your search. We can click this uh, magnifying glass to only look at um, to, on, to only look at the the donations uh, these in these 28 records for Charlie Crist. So I, I click the magnifying glass and open this new tab here. Uh, we can click record there, and this will show you uh, the people. Um, a lot of these, you know, some of these have come from Jorge Dominicus. Uh, Brian R. Evans, John Hurley, John O'Rourke, Thomas Weirdsma, um, and we and we can uh, um, you know sort these like you would do sort of any spreadsheet. The, the default is to sort them by biggest donations first. You can see here these are twenty-four hundred dollar ones um, because there's a bunch that are for exactly twenty-four hundred dollars. I my might guess that that might be. Um, you know, a, ma a maximum that, that someone's allowed to give. Um, but I'm not really familiar with, with Florida's particular uh, elections laws. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that is the gist of, of how to use follow the money, uh, at least for this sort of research project. Like I said earlier, this is an extremely powerful research tool. Um, I encourage people to sort of uh, play around with it. Uh, you know, I use it very frequently uh, in my work with little sis, and I am certain that I don't even know all like the all the different uh, neat features and different things you can do there. Um, but this uh, this is how I would use this tool, anyways, in approaching a research project to you know identify uh, you know who are um, you know who 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 which politicians in a given area are are taking money from. Uh, Immigrant detention profiteers. Um, I guess I'll, I'll pause for for questions one more time, and then if we don't have any, um, um, I can I can toss it back to Molly. But if we but don't let that discourage you. If you have questions, please please ask. Hello, can can hey, can you hear hey me? Rob. Yeah, we can hear you. Awesome. Um, there was a question um, earlier about uh, whether uh, Open Secrets has any kind of um, drop down for sources and citations. Um, that you know of? They don't have, oh, Open Secrets doesn't have um, drop downs. But here, let me navigate back here. Um, at the bottom of, of each page, they'll tell, it tells you where the data on that page comes from, though. So here, this says the numbers on this page are based on contributions from PACs and individuals giving $200 or more during the 2018 election cycle released by the Federal Election Commission. As far as I know, all of the data on open secrets is coming from either the Federal Election Commission, um, the or the Federal Election Commission, um, the Senate uh, database uh, of lobbying filings, or the various uh, clerks of the House and Senate for um, personal financial disclosure information. Which is to say, as far as I know, all of the information on open secrets is coming from uh, public sources and meaning like the, the the US government. Great, thanks a lot. Yeah. Should, should I ask the question through post yeah, go for it. or through the message box? You can you can go ahead. Well, yeah, you can go ahead. Oh yeah, I, I was just wondering uh, in particular just to identify the donors, uh, the donations towards politicians coming from these private prisons are open secret, is open secrets and follow the money the only sources that you're suggesting or are we missing other sources that you haven't mentioned yet? We, we showed these two because um, these are, we, we just thought these would have like the broadest uh, applicability to people, uh, you know, exploring this sort of research topic. Um, another place that folks uh, might turn to is the various uh, state boards of elections uh, campaign finance databases. Um, you know, there's there's uh, you know 50. There's more than 50 of those, 
Um, and so, you know, we, and they all were a very good view. It's, it's there, like I said, there's a little bit of lag time, um, from when filing, filing deadlines happen to when the data is like cleaned up and entered into follow the money. Um, but other, other sources that you might use could be, uh, the federal election commission has its own, uh, database that you can use to explore uh, federal campaign finance information. And then uh, each state in, in DC, um, all, they, they have uh, their own uh, campaign finance uh, uh, databases that, that folks um, can use. Thanks. Cool, thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, if, if people have other questions, feel free to put them in the chat, but we're just gonna uh, move on to the poll just to get a sense of what people are excited about doing coming out of this webinar, if anything, um, and to respect folks, time will be done by the hour. So Manira is gonna put up a couple of poll questions that should pop up on people's screens. Um, so our first one is one thing we're interested in doing um, in kind of talking with groups that are working around immigrant detention is creating a more complete data set around elected officials that are taking money from these profiteers. So if you're interested in helping out with that, you can click yes um, on that poll question. If you're not, you can click no thanks. And this would be something that you could do from home. We'll continue to give people more support um, and could be just like a couple of hours sometime in the next two weeks or so. And you'd be practicing using these tools to do that. We'll wait a couple more minutes for folks to say yes and or a couple more seconds for folks to say yes or no. Cool. We'll wait two more seconds. Cool. And then the second question kind of is similar if you're interested um, in that project, but if you're interested in helping us kind of coordinate it. So particularly for folks who maybe have um, campaign finance experience, like our researchers as their full-time jobs or people who feel like they can put more time towards this, it would be just like helping support people as they're going through the research process, helping us figure out how to break down the research path. So if you're interested in that, Say yes. And I should say too, I think the idea right now is that it'll kind of be like a big public spreadsheet. So we'll share that around too. I saw some folks saying that they don't have time to do the research, but they want to run with the research. So we'll definitely make sure it gets into, into folks' hands. Okay, cool. I think we can go to the last question. Um, and the last question is a little bit more general, um, is if you or your organization are interested in exploring different strategies to hold these elected official, officials accountable. Um, so once we do the research and figure out which elected officials are taking money, um, if you'd like to be part of those conversations and think about what that could look like, you know, from direct action to writing op-eds, to getting your local party to pass something saying they won't take money from those profiteers if you're interested in that conversation. Yeah. We'll wait a couple more seconds if there's still people going. Cool. And then Rob, can you put on the last slide real quick so I can tell folks um, some other resources for people? So if, if you said you're interested in that project, we'll follow up with folks and we can also get a sense of like which places people are particularly interested in, et cetera. But I just wanted to make sure people know about a few other resources um, that you can use and how to kind of get in touch with us. Um, so one thing is you can sign up for a LittleSys account. We didn't show LittleSys.org tonight, but that's our kind of flagship database that we run. 
Um, so if you go to littleflips.org slash join, you can create an account and then there'll be a little um, little button on the top of the website where it'll say chat and there's different kind of chat channels like how like a Slack channel works. And there's one right now that's called immigrant detention politicians. So if you have questions immediately and are trying to get in touch with us, that's one place to go and ask them. And we can also use that to coordinate moving forward. Um, another thing is news.littlesys.org is our blog where we've been putting out kind of updated um, and timely information on immigrant detention profiteers. So definitely check that out. You can see what we've been publishing um, and we'll be publishing in coming days. I saw a couple of people asking for New York State specific stuff. We do a lot of stuff in New York State. Um, including a lot of stuff around Cuomo and his ties to immigrant detention profiteers right now. So you can check that out. Um, and then for folks who are wanting to go deeper on particular research tools, including campaign finance, littlefolks.org slash toolkit is where we have a lot of kind of research methodology explainers. We'll be getting back in touch with folks who have said they're interested in continuing working on this project. And thanks everyone for jumping on um, and hope you have a good rest of your night.